Hello and welcome to Module 13, Network Virtualization. Please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're ready. All right, so um, in this chapter, there's a lot of good videos that you, um, I highly recommend that you actually watch. Okay, so this chapter and the next chapter too. So please watch the videos. It's a lot of good information in there on the new upcoming technologies in terms of um, automations and virtualizations and cloud computing. So let's start with cloud computing. Uh, please write the following bullet points down, uh, bullet points when it comes to uh, cloud computing. So cloud computer, it's gonna enable access to an organization's data from anywhere at any time. It's going to streamline the organization's IT operations, eliminate or reduce the need for on-site IT equipment, of course, and reduce cost, energy, physical plans requirements, and personal training needs, enable rapid, rapid responses to increasing data volume requirements as well. So there's a big advantage, and there's a huge reason why um, Amazon Web Services and uh, Microsoft Azure are um, increasing very, very fast. So um, this is probably where everybody is nowadays moving to, moving things to the cloud. All right, so uh, again, I know we probably discussed this before, but please write the following three cloud computing services that have been defined by the NISC, that's the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And the three are Software as a Service, SaaS, Platform as a Service, that's the PaaS, and the Infrastructure as a Service. SaaS is when you have uh, the cloud provider is responsible to access applications. So you can, you know, this is like renting apps off the internet. Uh, a good example is uh, Microsoft 365 and all the other goodies. You pay a certain fee. You get uh, to actually uh, to use the application instead of have to installing it yourself. Then you got server uh, platform. The cloud was responsible for providing users access to the development of tools and the services. So they give you all the goodies that you want to develop your own applications on how to deliver them and services. Then you got the infrastructures. They can actually give you a whole network and uh, servers, you name it, everything. Routers and switches, of course, all in the cloud. You don't have to purchase any of these. And the good thing is you are constantly connected, upgraded, security-wise, you name it. You don't have to worry about any of that. And if you need to expand, you can almost, you know, <clears throat> and it's, it's scalable and, um, so it's really a huge market right now. All right, so those are the different types, the three different types of services, the SAS, the PaaS, and the IS. All right, the four primary cloud models, so please write those down as well. You got the public uh, cloud. This is where you have uh, the cloud applications services are made available to the general population. Then you got the private ones. Uh, the cloud-based applications and services intended for a specific organization, not for everybody. Then you got the hybrid, a mixture of public and private, and you got the community clouds. You know, community clouds are created exclusively for a specific community. Uh, it all, you know, <clears throat> for example, you got the healthcare organization cloud, or maybe for the government or some, something like that. All right, so those are just uh, four different models that are out there. Um, don't forget that, uh, for example, your OneDrive or Dropbox are also storage areas in the cloud. So what's the difference between data centers and cloud computing? Okay, so there are specific differences. Data centers is typically a storage and processing facility run by the in-house IT. So this is you control the data centers and you pay the uh, your service provider for the connection to get to that data center. 
Cloud computing is so you're paying someone else and they keep your data, right? It's still in the cloud, right? That's in the cloud because you don't know exactly where the service is and you have no control over it. A third party takes care of all of that for you. All right, so you should know the difference between them. Let's talk about uh, virtualization. Virtualization, the term virtual cloud computing and virtu virtualization, by the way, is often interchangeably. However, they mean different things. So please write that down. Virtualization is the foundations of cloud computing. Without cloud computing, as it is most likely implemented, uh, you know, virtualization doesn't exist. Okay, so what is virtualization? Bullet point number two, you should write that down. It separates the operating system from the hardware. All right, uh, we've used and you probably have used uh, VirtualBox or VMware or even Microsoft Hyper-V. All of those are called hypervisors to create a virtualization environment. And we'll discuss that. Now, here's where uh, we can start off with explaining how ver what the advantages of vir vir uh, virtualization. In the old days, you had dedicated servers. You had a web server, an email server, and all of these different servers, and each server required its own uh, computer processing, memory, you name it. Physical connections, maintenance, on-site, upgrading, backup, all of that. And it took space, of course. But now you could have all of this on one machine, right? So you could have, uh, you could have, a server, you can have all the servers running on one machine. You can have the hypervisor in between that connects you between, connects all of these to use the hardware on that one device. That's what the hypervisor, uh, Oracle Virtual Box or VMware or Microsoft Hyper, Hyper V does, is allow different operating systems use the same hardware on one machine and of course you can reserve and do all the goodies with it so that's what's you know this is much easier now it's that but make sure that the host has enough memory and cpu power to handle multiple servers um, especially if they are going to run at the same time all right so please write down the advantages of virtualization so of course less equipment are going to be needed we're using less energy and of course less space all right then you got the abstraction layers the hypervisor guy in the middle taking care of all of that so a computer a computer system consists of the following abstraction layer you got the services os firmware and hardware and the and the hypervisor is the guy that separates between the hardware, the firmware and the hardware, and the services in the OS system. That's where the hypervisor comes in. All right. So you can have your service, your operating system, all of them communicate with the firmware and the hardware on your device. Uh, there are two types of hypervisors. Okay. We'll start with type two. Type 2 is the one that we've been using, you know, in class using uh, VirtualBox or Hyper-V or VMware. <clears throat> Type 2 is where you have um, already an operating system running on your, that's the host, and you install the hypervisor on top of it, and then you install the VMs in there. So please write the first bullet down, uh, the two bullets for Hyper or uh, type two hypervisors. Okay, so after you install the hypervisor, in there you can put in all your VMs, virtual machines. This one has Windows operating system, another OS, another Unix, and so on. And they all communicate with the hypervisor, and the hypervisor uh, communicates with the operating system to have you access to the hardware. So for example, on Linux OS, you can um, have enough memory for it, to use the hardware that you have so you can have your own Linux machine and you can easily connect to it. 
um, go um, multitask at the same time. Just make sure you have enough hard drive space and, of course, enough memory, especially if you're going to run all of these different virtual machines at the same time. Let's take a look at the... Now, there is a Type 1 hypervisor. Type 1 is when you install the hypervisor directly on on the machine with no operating system. So the hypervisor goes directly on the, on the machine and then the operating and the, the VMs go directly there. So there is no host with type one hypervisor. So please write down the first bullet points. Um, it's bare metal because it goes direct, it does not have a host operating system, all right? They improve scalability. Please write down that last statement. That's why you, if you ever want to use type one. They improve scalability, performance, and robustness. Right? They move much quicker. You're going to use cloud computing. That's probably the way to go. All right. So uh, installing a hypervisor, type two is not, not a bad idea. It's easy to do. We've done that. You just download. Uh, Oracle or VMware and install it immediately on your host machine. Uh, type 1 requires a management console so to be able to handle all of that because uh, to install it just like you're installing an application or installing an operating system. Okay, so and that management console is the one that allows you to control all the VMs that are being installed, uh, installed on your device. All right. Uh, the complexity of network virtualization can be, you know, can be seen here. You can have USC servers. <clears throat> uh, you can you have the Nexus servers on here. All of these could be done on virtually, believe it or not. All of these could be done in the cloud. So you can have as many servers as you want. You don't even have to see any of this. Okay. All right, um, we'll stop right here. So please take down the notes that I asked you to. And then I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to submit your notes.